good afternoon here on this beautiful Sunday, June the 28th. Welcome to the Sure You Can Scrimmage, the beginner Street Fighter V tournament where we have players who are ranked gold and under be able to play against each other in a tournament bracket, get some Smash.gg experience, get some tournament experience, get some playing on stream experience, getting nervous and those kind of things like that. So uh, it should be a lot of fun. This is the third one. Um, the uh, first one was capped at 16. Second one was capped at 32. This one's capped at 32, but we actually hit the 32 players this time. And not only that, but I've seen a lot of people um, say, dang, I missed the registration. I didn't get in in time, which means 32 cap might actually be too much. So uh, I might actually, I mean, too little, I should say. So at some point in time, I may try to extend the cap to 64 as well to see how that goes. Of course, that makes the tournament bigger, the bracket bigger, the tournament will run a little bit longer. So I don't know how much, you know, time commitment people will have and, and, and such. And obviously makes it running the event by myself a little trickier. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's go ahead and go to the first match, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the back of the queue. And Cuban Missile and Owen, uh, you guys can start your match. Yeah, I had it unplugged. <laughs> That would definitely cause something like that uh, to happen. So we've got the Cuban Missile with Honda. Also, let me know how the game volume is and everything like that uh, in the chat, if it's too loud or if it's at a good volume. And uh, it is going to be Honda versus Nash. Interesting. <laughs> and just in the Southeast uh, CPT event uh, this past weekend, we saw some high-level Nash play from one of the players who actually got top eight, a character who, you know, is considered on the lower end of the tier list, but clearly still capable of winning. Honda, of course, is a character that many people... Way. You know, we'll jokingly you. say Round it's one. glue, but <laughs> we'll see how this matchup goes. Of course, the online spectator mode always has this thing where, you know, you come in late, so it fast forward to catch you up, so that's just gonna happen. Good block. And a punish with just a raw uh, V trigger. That's one of those things you activate V trigger, you have the V trigger in mind ready to go. So you just go for the V trigger, but. You always want to have your punish combo in your brain uh, so that in situations like that where something gets blocked and you know it's punishable, maybe he wasn't sure if it was punishable. But if you know it's punishable, you'll do something that's higher damage. For example, button in the v trigger at least would have gotten a little more damage. Ooh! Oh god, he thought, you know what, Owen thought that there was probably going to be two headbutts on block. And so he blocked one and didn't realize it was going to stop. And yeah, this is the power of Honda. Uh, when you play Honda, yeah, see? Here's the thing about Honda. If you want to get into Street Fighter V, if you want a good character to start with, Honda's not a bad character to start with because Doing hand slaps is a very, very powerful weapon because that light hands and medium hands are plus on block, so you can kind of just do hands, 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 hands all day. Round and if one. the opponent is unaware of the frame data and such, it's a very difficult thing to, to manage against. It's a very tough situation. See, here you go. When, when you block Honda's hands, if it's the medium or the light one, he's plus. And if you try to do something and he does a light button, he'll beat you. But if he does hands twice in a row, you can actually blow it up pretty badly with a slow move like that, crouching heavy kick. So that's uh, something that you have to be willing to throw out against Honda's every once in a while. And it's a scary thing to try to do. Oh, look at that! Kara stomp in the hand. Yeah, see, this is a tough situation. If you don't know how to handle Honda, if you don't have the knowledge of how to deal with Honda, this is exactly what happens. You block hands all day and you get beat up. 
I like that. Uh, that emote is perfect, Kino Theater, for Honda. Yeah. And see, what's going to be tough about this situation here, especially for a player like Owen, he's just going to be sitting here and thinking to himself, oh, dang, I got beat up on stream, and uh, that feels bad and everything like that. But really, honestly, what happens is Honda, against wait. Honda, this happens a lot. And Honda's one of those knowledge check characters. If you do not have the knowledge to fight Honda, Honda's gonna blow you up. And in fact, maybe towards the, maybe at the end of this entire stream, I'll it's actually so just add a special, um, how to deal with Honda kind of section. <laughs> because I think a lot of people have trouble with uh, fighting against Honda, especially at this level over here. Okay. Here we go. It is going to be Starix with the Akuma versus Godjove with the Kami. Okay, this is going to be a tough one. Two very, very strong characters. NZX. Dude, Justin Wong. Shout outs to Mr. J Wong standing in the chat over here. I, I'll, I'll do that, Justin. <laughs> do you have a connection that I can actually uh, contact? If you have a, a contact that I may be able to speak to, that would be super awesome. Shout outs to Justin Wong. Uh, always one of the uh, most wonderful people in the community. Oh, yeah, you gotta punish that Tatsu right there. And you can see right now, Gajove a little bit stuck in the corner. That's a good back throw from Starix to put him back there, but then just a little uh, carelessness and got himself back thrown in the corner. Good. Wow! I'm not sure if that back medium punch was too early, but that cross-up actually seemed to have beat it. I think it was a little too early. Ooh, not a hit confirm, and that should have been a critical art right there, because that critical art would have won. Now, God Jove is going to go into the next round with the full meter, so you're like, that's good, but it's better to get that guaranteed victory at that point. And again, you know, you don't have to react and be like, oh, shoot, let's do the super over here this time. As soon as that meter becomes full, that is something that you should become cognizant of instantaneously so that the next time you land something that can go into the super easily, you're all ready to use it. Keeping track of your meter and your opponent's meter at all time gives you a lot of information of what you and your opponent wants to do and uh, what you're capable of at a moment's notice. And again, I really like God Jove having that back medium punch ready to go as an anti-air. Like I said, the first time I felt like it was just a little too early and it got crossed up because back medium punch actually does pretty well even on against cross-up distances. Uh, <laughs> slide in the DMs. <laughs> I will do that. Round <laughs> one. Uh, dude, let Harper be a grappler. Let her go to the side of right. Okay, good footsies, good neutral from Starix there. I like the little poking with the crouching medium kicks. Uh, standing medium punch is another button he might want to consider using. Good hit confirm. You need to make sure that if you do the combo into the drill like that off of the two crouching medium punches from Cammy, to go into the heavy drill, because the heavy drill sets up perfect frame trap dash into meaty on quick rise and that's something that's very very important uh, for Cammy. Oh yeah I got it oh but you know what may might have been scared that it would have turned around and uh, wouldn't have hit and yeah that's another thing too yeah see right there God Joe keeps going for the light drill uh, God Jove at some point in time has to switch to the heavy drill not only does it give you the biggest corner carry but like I said, also gives you the perfect uh, frame kill setup for perfect meaties. One of the things about Street Fighter V, and that's not a hit confirm from God Joe, so that's got to be a little bit dangerous there. It could have been a whiff OS. It was the perfect distance for a whiff option select, which is at a range where you're not going to hit the opponent. You just do the button into special move. But I'm not sure if God Jove has that yet, because if he does, uh, shouldn't be in silver. Because <laughs> that, that's definitely a little bit more of a higher level tactic. And again, Godjo going with the light drill there. We're going to need to see that switch to the heavy drill at some point in time. 
Uh, no tech ride. Oh, wake up, super. Did he touch a button? I don't think he hit. Oh, he did. Ow. Gonna be big damage right there. God Jove is up one to zero, by the way, and I have not updated the scores. Oh, and just the air to air. There you go. So, uh, God Jove is gonna take this 2 0 over Starix and send Starix to the loser's bracket. Hey, no problem, Sola Sunflower. That's that's the way it works, right? But you keep doing this, you keep coming back for more, you keep playing. Remember, going 0-2 in a tournament is never something to be discouraged about. Keep in mind that 25% of the players go 0-2 in a tournament, okay? So if you have 32 players in there, eight of them are gonna go 0-2. That's a big chunk. 25% of the players go 0-2 in a tournament. If you have 1,024 players uh, in a tournament, for example, 124 divided by four, 256 of them are going 0-2. That's the nature of a double elimination bracket. And it's a uh, very, and it can be kind of discouraging, but like I said, that's just the nature of it. And it's one of those things that uh, can't let yourself get too discouraged over. Uh, Pepe is a strong Sagat player, but looks like Pepe's going with Karen this time. That's actually crazy. <laughs> Dude, Madame, Madame uh, Bunessa, yeah, exactly. You go 0-2 and, and it's just like, oh my God, and you feel bad, but like I said, it happens all the time. There you go. All right, so Pepe and step four, or step IV. So we've got a classic footsies match here between both of these characters. Very footsie based uh, matchup here. Uh, okay, nice. Gets the back throw. And I like, I, I, I do like what I'm seeing from both of the players. Playing pretty solid footsies here. Now that's risky. Pepe just kind of going for the Resenha like that. That is definitely a very kind of common, you know, if you have lag, good uh, tactic for online lag matches, but using a raw Rasenha like that, especially a heavy or a medium one, is dangerous. Not safe unless I believe it's in V-Trigger 1. If it's in V-Trigger 1, I believe it's actually safe at that point in time. Oh no, Solo Sunflower, trust me. Talk to a lot of the other players here in the chat too, and I'm sure a lot of them feel very similarly as well. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, Goofer. Like, you know, I talked about this on one of my streams one time. Sometimes you'll see crazy Ken players or crazy Nash players, you know, do crazy things and their connections aren't great. And you can't get mad at them. They're learning to play the game correctly. They're learning to play the environment that they're in. And that's the way it works. And so you can't really, oh, beautiful bait, but no punish. And for Pepe, that's just one of those things that he's gonna have to practice. All of you guys probably have to practice that. That should be dead right there. Yes, good job to step IV. So the question is now, is Pepe gonna keep with the Karen and try to learn the Karen, or is Pepe gonna switch back over to Sagat that we saw what he was using two weeks ago uh, in the tournament? Oh yeah, dude, don't worry about the uh, don't worry about the jitters at all. That's the whole point of putting you guys into this situation. I want you guys to have the jitters. I want you guys to have the nervousness because that will help prepare you for what it feels like when you know the quarantine is over. We can start going back to tournaments and such. It'll be exciting times, exciting times and then you know you'll go to your locals and play and you'll already kind of have that experience and that's probably uh, the important part. Yes, and I will DQ the players who were DQ'd in the first round. So let's see here, uh, who got DQ'd? Uh, I'll do that in a second. I just wanna make sure I'm still commentating the match over here so that the guys can get the advice over here. Ooh, missed the cross up, but didn't use the cross up button. He's jumping light kick. EX leg, is that gonna be enough to kill? It is, yeah. And that's one of the nice things about having Kikosho for Chun-Li, is Kikosho really kind of lends itself to that kind of combo extension and uh, quick kills uh, in those low situations. As a player, when you fight against Chun-Li, and I say this as a person who fails to do this all the time and I get hit by it every time, you know, I talked about keeping an eye on your super meter and your opponent's super meter. 
Keep an eye on the V trigger gauge as well. Super important thing to do because if you are not keeping track of your V trigger gauge, you are not realizing when the opponent wants to activate their V trigger. In the case for Chun Li, she's always going to go for crouching medium punch into V trigger, which hits low, which is such a good way for her to sneak in. Because at a range in which you don't have to worry about that crouching medium punch, she's going to hit you with that activate V trigger and you will die and lose a lot of life. So, um. Oops. At Mary. Uh. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so when Chun-Li has that V-Trigger ready to go, make sure you keep an eye on the low strong. That is one of the things that you have to be careful of the most. Got to update the score, but Step over here uh, has taken, no worries. Uh, let's see, I think I have to DQ them. All right, here we go. So good job to Step IV. And to be honest with you, with the way that I was watching Step IV play, uh, very strong, very strong play style right there. I, I really feel like Step IV, who is silver ranked right now, is playing beyond their rank. Uh, I do feel like this is something that, you know, when you do play online, a lot of times things like this happens and you just have trouble or they could be using an alternate account like on a different platform that they are actually stronger than their silver ranking. I'll keep an eye on Step IV. Definitely looks like a very strong player. So, oh, just got to silver according to Step IV and palms are sweaty. Well, let me tell you something, Step IV. Very well played. I really like a lot of what you played there. Very good neutral. Very good spacing and had a lot of very uh, strong, strong stuff going on there. So good job, good job. Yeah, no worries, Pepe. I was talking about that. I mentioned that you played Sagat last time. And when you did play Sagat, you did very, very well uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago. Very well. Uh, just so people know that. Uh, so far, Mike loves Diana. I've been doing this about every other week. That seems to be about right, so that I don't burn myself out and uh, because of uh, just, you know, having things that I need to actually do or just busy. So Mike loves Diana. So far, it's been every other week and that's kind of been the consistent uh, speed on this. So Unix in Smash.gg, CFN is named is Hamburgini and I love it. Uh, that is definitely a high quality burger right there. So uh, we are gonna take that over there. Hamburgini versus JD Proc. Uh, Ultra Gold is too high for now, Star Tropic, because I want to give people a lot of chances to, you know, uh, not get beat up by uh, Ultra Gold and Super Gold players right now. Dude, if you just got Super Gold, Mr. QJ, that's great. That means you're doing well, and that is your own reward right there. So, okay, so here we go. It is JD Proc versus Hamburgini. Gonna go. Oh, I need that stream deck, man. I need that stream deck thing so that I can actually just start playing on command. Oh, wow, that was very quick. Nice. Okay, so JD Proc and Hamburgini going out against each other. Chun-Li versus Sakura. Again, a very standard footsies match here. Oh, didn't quite get that punish there. I'm not even sure what the frame data on Chun-Li's crouching heavy punch is. It should be pretty net. It should be punishable. But I think uh, JD Proc just missed it. And again, another miss there. Oh. Ah, I think Hamburgini was trying to go for jump into stomp or something, but came out with an offensive crouch heavy kick, not sure. Uh, or that was just like some sort of crazy setup. Ooh. Okay, knockdown. That is such a good buff for Chun. Here we go with the throw. And no quick rise from JD Proc. And JD, one of the things that I'm gonna have to suggest to JD right now is he's gotta learn the hit confirms. Every character has good hit confirm combos. They're designed that way. I don't think that there's a single character in this game that doesn't have at least a pretty solid two hit, hit con two move hit confirm for you to make sure that you don't accidentally go into something unsafe like that uppercut there. 
And there again was the uh, punish at minus four. Okay, so Sakura standing light kick might not be able to punish it. Because if I'm not mistaken, Sakura standing light kick is five frames or is it four frames? Ugh. God, this is the pro this is the hardest thing about Street Fighter V is you kind of have to remember all of this frame data to, to to be able to play, you know, solidly like that. And it is a tricky thing. So it is four. Okay, thanks, Mira. Thanks. So it is four, so it should be able to punish it, but you need frame-perfect timing here. And see, again, this, this is the biggest weakness from JD Proc right now is he is missing the hit confirms. Now, that could be online lag. That could be just execution problem. That could be nerves of being on stream. So there you go. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Boxer and Laura and uh, and Lucia. Now that you mentioned it, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Of course it's four because I get punished by that stupid move on my Lucia burn kick all the time. Ah. <laughs> oh man, yes. Totally recommend it. <laughs> well, yeah, of course JD Brock is on bronze, but that's how you're gonna get stronger is learning how to hit confirm like that. And that's one of the things that I, you know, I'm planning to tell. And one of the important things too is that when they come back and rewatch these matches, when they hear me talk about this, uh, that'll definitely help them. So what I wanted to do was uh, find Honda uh, hit confirms. Boy, Sakura. And then there was a match on stream earlier that I wanted to give some advice on, and I can't remember what it was anymore. Round one. Fight. I gotta do a better job keeping notes. Um. All right, so JD Proc going for that light kick into uppercut. Definitely a very popular sequence. Yeah, I had Honda on there. There was another one that I wanted to do that I thought of that I didn't say out loud that uh, I just forgot, and that's basically just how it goes. <laughs> that's what happens when you have a senile, when you're a senile old man like I am. Okay, so JD Proc again having trouble with that standing light kick into into Shouken, and again, you know that's a very good thing. But JD, uh, but Hamburgini's doing it as well. Hamburgini's fishing with that crouching heavy punch into the V skill, and while that is a good sequence, oh no, that's not good. Into critical art, and Hamburgini's gonna take that round over there. Um, uh, does sound scary? Yes, it does. <laughs> But we will definitely uh, work on that. But both players having a little trouble with the hit confirms over here. Uh, crouching heavy punch into V skill can be punished by players who have the reaction to it. But obviously against the bronze player, you're gonna be able to get away with that a lot. And that's the, that's the thing. And that's the hardest thing about playing Street Fighter and fighting games in general. When you play against other players who are beginners, you know, obviously this is a beginner tournament, so uh, that's what's going to happen, is you'll start to get away with a lot of things that aren't going to work against players of higher caliber. So while these things work, it reinforces in your brain that this is the correct thing to do because it works against some players. Then when you get to the higher levels, these things don't work anymore. And you can't, it's really hard to process that kind of dissonance between results. It's really hard to process and, 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 and figure out why crouching heavy punch into V-Skill is great a lot of times and will help you win all the time, but then on other matches it doesn't work. But since you get away with it a lot of other times, it reinforces this idea that it's the correct thing to do. And that's one of the hardest things about fighting games is that you have to unlearn so much as you play fighting games. The things that make you win matches early on are not the things that are gonna make you win matches later on. And it's so hard to figure that out and to really kind of process that situation. It's, it's, um, Seasoned, yeah, it's it's kind of a it's it's a weird dissonance and it's very very difficult to to handle Yes, Miko Jin, uh, I actually purchased the uh, Turf Wars hardcover of the Legend of Korra uh, Legend of Korra the comic 
was also drawn by Irene Co, aka Coquette, on Twitter, who is married to Pat the Flip who runs the beginner Guilty Gear tournaments in Northern California, and uh, which Coquette actually plays a plays in a lot of the time as she's learning Guilty Gear as well. So there's the FGC ties everywhere. The entire Korra Turf Wars comic was drawn by Irene. And uh, so one of the reasons why I bought that was to support her as well and because I need to binge more Avatar stuff. So that is a super cool. Oh, here we go. M. Bison versus Alex. We've got an Alex with Baffin Thingy and Balbury. Okay, so here we go. Now, of course, a lot of people, you know, have talked about how uh, Alex is not very good, but, you know, especially at this level in gold, he can be very strong because Alex is another one of those characters that you need to study. If you do not study him, he can blow you up pretty badly. But look at this right now. Balbury, oh, almost had the stun, but then a missed meaty. And this is important. This is why you have to make sure you have your meaties timed properly because if you do not, one back throw like that can cost you the whole entire match. Balbury almost had the stun, got thrown on Alex's wake up, and that should very rarely happen. You should almost never be thrown by the opponent on their wake up unless they have some sort of call out. But even if you plan to do nothing, walking backwards is at least what you want to do. Because if you walk backwards on their wake up, you will always be outside of their throw range. And that is really important. And again, like I said, Alex, one of those characters that you kind of have to study a little bit. And so you saw that from uh, the situation where Balbury was getting kind of flash chopped all day. Nice parry! And that's another thing you have to be worried about from Alex is because they want to parry after stops every single time. And you can't hit the button unless you're sure you can punish it. Now the stop from Alex is Alex definitely win. punishable. It's minus six or minus seven. Definitely punishable, but if it stomps you on your knees, it can be a little bit safer because it lands faster after the block. So the frame data changes. So what a lot of Alex players will do is try to stomp you on your knees, and if you block it, you think you can punish it, you hit a button, and he goes into the parry, and then he blows you up for that reason right there. It's one of the things that you have to be careful of when you fight against Alex and be cognizant of where the stomp hits you. Of course, it's a very hard thing to do. If he has V-Trigger actives after you block the stomp, maybe the best thing to do is just get the hell out of there. You're always going to be plus no matter what, so use that opportunity to just backdash, get away, jump forward in case he tries to do the uh, V-Trigger parry, because then you can just kind of get away, uh, etc. EX stomps, yes, are plus on block, so you have to be scared of that one. If you block EX stomp, he's plus on block, and that's one of the scary things. And that's one of the tricky things about Street Fighter V. A move and the EX version can go from extremely negative and punishable to being completely plus on block. And again, these are things that you have to memorize. So for Balbury right here, he's got to do kind of the same thing. So he's got some nice little cross-up situations there. But what we haven't seen a lot from Balbury is the Bison plus frame abuse. Let's see if we can see some EX scissors. Our plus now obviously he doesn't have the meter right now standing heavy kick we haven't seen a lot of psycho acts from Balbury as well see right there he missed the meaty and that almost cost him if Baffin did not a thingy did not oh my god the the okie dokes and again so here's the thing at the beginner levels that kind of situation flash chop into critical art is a valid tactic because a lot of times opponents are gonna hit buttons on there. And it'll work at high levels as well, don't get me wrong. But it is kind of a Hail Mary, and it is kind of one of those things that you have to be selective about it if you can get the right read on the opponent. Uh, the plus frames on Bipsin are Psycho Axe, Standing Heavy Kick, Standing Medium Punch, Standing Light Punch, Standing Light Kick, EX Scissor Kicks, uh, everything. <laughs> Everything is plus.
<laughs> uh, for Bipson. So that's one of the things that you have to be uh, concerned about. But there we go. It looks like Balbury is gonna go down and uh, Thingy is gonna take that two to zero. <laughs> yeah, trust me, Bison is very, very... It's why a lot of people hate fighting against Bison, because he has that ability to oppress you with those buttons like that, so... Mm, okay, hasn't confirmed it yet. I will fix that in just a little bit. Bison plus frames. All right, so here we go. Step IB versus Dro SFB, so Dro versus Step. And Dro had, this is uh, the second uh, event in a row that Dro has been using Laura. The first one that he got second place in, he did it with Ryu. And now he's trying to, and then the, the previous event, Show You Can Scrimmage, number two, he was using um, Laura. So this is the second week in a row, second event in a row that Dro has been using Laura. Here we go, good damage off of that. And again, Step by V said he, they just got to silver, but I really like what I see out of Step by V. There's already a very strong uh, cognizant understanding of kind of footsies and patience. This is what Chun-Li brings to the table though. The fast walk speed and the excellent buttons makes Chun-Li, makes characters like Kami, great early characters to start with. Good characters to be beginners with. Um, because they kind of teach you that situation. Uh, let's see. Nero. Let's see. Let's submit. Okay, uh, back to the stream over here. So it looks like Dro is going to take that first match. Sorry, I didn't get to commentate that uh, second round right there because I was uh, trying to do some TOing stuff over there. Oh, you ran into Dro playing this Laura online like yesterday. That's awesome, Shin Air Bear. That's awesome. All right, so here we go again. Back to the situation again. And Laura's another one of those characters that will blow you up if you don't understand the Laura situations. And what I'm seeing from Dro right now is really, really strong set play performance right now. I really like what I'm seeing out of Dro's play. Uh, a very marked improvement of the Laura from the previous two weeks ago. Learned a lot with this character, it seems like, already. Learning some of the frame data setups. And so, Step by V is having a little bit of trouble here uh, fighting against that. So, what I like from Step by V right now, Step by V is doing very well in the neutral. I like the neutral game that Step by V is playing. However, what Step by V is missing right now is the fact that they do not have the Laura knowledge and uh, just doing things like hitting buttons on their wake up. Um, that's what it was. That's what it was. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I already wrote that down. So there you go. So Dro there. Dominant performance there. But no surprise because, again, Dro has been uh, placing second place in this tournament uh, for two events in a row. And, you know, if Dro can get here to top three, you know, for three events in a row, and someone like Interceptor can get top four for multiple events in a row, that's really great. And what's great about that is then, while Dro and Interceptor, if they remain in gold and other players are thinking, wow, these guys are too strong for the beginner tournament, what happens is they become the experts, right? So when we're in a situation where you are a top player and you're a gatekeeper, but you're not quite knuckle dude, you're not quite punk, you're not quite Idon. When you play against these kind of players and you go and play against a rushdown in the Reddit tournament, those are the guys that you're gunning for. Those are the players that you know, they, that you're, you're glad they're in the tournament because they're always there to keep you in check and to make sure that you know what you're gunning for. By having players like Dro, like Gypsy Danger, like the Interceptor, repeatedly making top four or top, you know, repeatedly getting high in the beginner's tournament is that sets now the rival for you it sets for you the goal of what you want to be and now when you run into dro or the interceptor on in the match you think to yourself oh god it's them it's like uh, you know other people running into punk in in an actual you know majors and such 
So by having Dro and Interceptor and Gypsy Danger and Kino Theater and players like this that consistently perform well in these tournaments, they become the targets for you. They are the ones that if you can beat them, you're just, you will pop off in your house and be like, oh, yes, and you know, and when you play them, you'll get the nerves like, oh my God, it's Dro, he's so good. His lore, I've seen him, he's so good. And again, that's part and parcel of the entire experience of playing in tournaments like this. So that is why it's important to me to have players like that remain in the bracket and actually, uh, you know, have those dominating games like that. A lot of it's gonna come from Laura knowledge. For example, getting hit by the elbow. Once you get hit by Laura's elbow, you are in a negative situation. Laura has the advantage and has the mix-ups. What are you supposed to do there? The answer is you guess. You just have to guess. But the thing is, after you get hit by Laura's elbow, when you guess, you wanna base the guess off of the correct decisions. Backdash to get away from the command throw, hit a button to try to stop Laura from stealing turns, or just blocking if you think Laura's gonna hit another button. Now, Dro, on the other hand, also has to learn the mix-ups from Laura's side. You know, the stand after the elbow, the crouching light kick you know, to chase down people walking backwards or trying to backdash or trying to jump. Maybe a standing heavy punch to crush counter a backdash for even bigger damage, etc., etc. That is the idea of what you have to do. You have to study those situations. And again, one of the most important things about a fighting game is that all situations that happen are repeatable. If Laura ground combos you into a light elbow, the frame data is gonna be the same 98% of the time. If she ever hits you with that light elbow, the frame data is gonna be the same 98 to 99% of the time. And because of that, that situation is repeatable. It's always going to be the same situation. So if you study that situation in particular, then when you fight Laura, every time you get hit by a light elbow, it's not like a, shoot, what should I do? Oh my gosh! It's a, oh, I got hit. I already immediately know what my options are and I'm going to guess between one of them. Is it a guess? Yes unfortunately, but that's fighting games. If you think you can play fighting games without guesses, you are sorely mistaken. <laughs> that is not going to happen. You, there are tons of guesses in fighting games, but they're all educated guesses, and you want to see how your opponent reacts in those situations. If you want to play it safe, you go for the safest option first and branch out to the other options from there. If you want to just go for the Hail Mary risk and the call out, you go for some of the crazier options. That's fighting games right there, but you base it on educated guesses on what happens in that situation. So there you go. So the annoying thing about Laura is if you jump out of her command grab, she has a ground to air throw. If you backdash, she can do elbow or sunset wheel, right? So if you jump out of her command grab, you want to neutral jump. And if she command grabs, you 100% can punish that. Command throws are super vulnerable on whip. If she does the regular throw, she can volt strike you out of the air. But if she's going for the regular throw, the weakness is that you can tech that. That's another layer to the mix up that Laura has. But if you neutral jump as a call out to escape the command throw instead of back jumping, neutral jump, you will get the punish for sure. And uh, Mazamoon, yeah, she's another character that will roll over you like a Honda, like an M. Bison, like an Alex, if you do not study those characters. So again, one of the key things of getting to the next level is learning to study characters. And that's one of the hardest parts out there. That's one of the hardest parts of learning fighting games, is taking the time to study, especially a game like Street Fighter V, where studying is so important. Daigo said that as well. He said, this is a game that you have to study. Uh, so Fearsock, how does one deal with having a bad mentality when losing? That is a great question because if you watch my streams, I whine and I cry and I beat myself up so badly every time I lose. Like I sit there and I'm just like, I'm the worst player ever. God, I suck. I'm so terrible. I'm so terrible at this game. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to do, but the thing about it is, what's interesting about me is because I'm an emotional player, the verbal frustrations sink me into worse frustrations, which is why I started streaming with the mic off 
to try to fix that problem that I have. By having the mic off and knowing people can't hear me crying, it made me cry less. <laughs> and I was able to think about my match a little more positively. The thing about the way to, 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 to process losing a lot more, one is if, it, if you are an emotional player and you do get emotional when you lose, it's okay. Just understand that you are an emotional person and don't take it personally, don't take it to heart. A lot of times I will complain about things. You will hear me bitch about Lucia being an awful character and she's really not. She's very good. She's not great. She's a good, strong character, solid character. So when I complain about how bad she is, it's kind of a way to just kind of let out the frustrations. But at the same time, in my heart, I don't believe it. And I know that I'm just using that, saying that as a means of an outlet, as a vent. That is a way for me to vent. And that's kind of one of the important things to keep in mind. Secondly, like Pepe says, keep losing, keep losing, and, and, and make sure you try to learn from that. Because one of the hardest things about fighting games is when you lose, you can't process why you lost. And that's the hardest part about fighting games. And this is why fighting games in this day and age are significantly harder to learn than they were back in the day of the arcades. Now that sounds ironic and sounds backwards of what everybody says. Everyone says, look, You've got all the tech out there on YouTube. You've got all this information. Learning fighting games is so much easier now than it was back in the arcade games, uh, arcade days. And I will disagree with that. I will disagree with that because when you find your local arcade that you played at, when you lose, you start making friends with other players while you're there and you just get frustrated and you vent your frustration, I don't know what to do, and then somebody else standing next to you go, hey, so when Laura hits you with the light elbow, you're actually minus two, so here's your options and here's her options to escape that, and you actually get the ability to discuss things with people. That just tended to happen when you showed up at a local a lot and people started getting to know each other. When you play online and you lose, there's nobody there to tell you anything. There's nobody there to point out to you that this is negative, stop doing that. That you're sweeping too much, stop doing that. And it actually makes it harder to learn fighting games in today's age than you did back then. Another reason why we're running the show you can the sure you can scrimmage is because now you're in the Discord after you lose to people, you have these people to talk to. I'm trying to simulate the arcade environment in which you can talk to other players uh, and get that kind of conversation going. When you play in ranked, a lot of times you don't get that conversation. So when you lose, you don't realize why it happened. And I've explained in the past, you'll fight a Yurian and the Yurian kills you with an Aegis Reflector mix-up. And you're like, what am I supposed to do? That thing is too cheap. What you didn't realize is that you lost because you let Yurian jump in on you. You only died because of the Aegis Reflector mix-up, and so Yurian seems cheap, he is, by the way, by the Aegis Reflector mix-up, but you didn't realize that you lost because you're not anti-airing, and you don't have anybody to tell you that. And therein lies the problem with learning fighting games by yourself in a ranked environment. And it's very, very scary. And I wouldn't necessarily say fighting games are more complicated, Mr. QJ. Because Street Fighter V is unquestionably more simple than Alpha 3. Street Fighter Alpha 3 is one of the most complex fighting games that you'll ever play in your entire life. But when you're at an arcade and you're playing against other people, you have people to talk to about it. Being able to discuss fighting games with other people is the reason why the arcade culture was so profit, not, not, I don't mean financially profitable, I mean skill-wise profitable and mentally profitable for this particular genre. By not having the arcade environment, we have changed the fighting game, learning fighting game path to something far more intimidating and far more difficult in my opinion. So I am actually of the opinion that it is far harder to learn fighting games today than it is than it was back in the day. It's not a popular opinion, but that's how I feel about that. So Alpha 1 was stupidly simple. Screw that game. Anyways, uh <laughs> not that the game was bad. The game was bad, but you know, it's fine, it's fine. 
Uh, being able to chat about the game with Mira and Eli and everyone in the chat has been really good for my interest in the game. The interesting thing about fighting games is that fighting games by nature is a very social genre. And that's why the online experience for fighting games, I have been saying for years, and I'm gonna say this for the beginners out there. This is, this is targeted expressly for the beginners out there because I want them to understand that they're not wrong. That the ranked online experience in fighting games is one of the most miserable experiences <laughs> in video games today. There is nothing enjoyable about the ranked experience playing online. So if you're playing it and you're getting frustrated and you're getting angry and asking yourself, why am I playing this? I can't get any better. You're not alone and you are 100% justified for feeling that way. 100% justified. Don't ever feel bad for feeling like playing online ranked is miserable and you're suffering. Because you know what? It is miserable and you are suffering. And that is the problem with fighting games online. We have to ch figure out a way to craft an environment in which it becomes more enjoyable and something that is more social. Hey, look, sure you can scrimmage. That is one of the points of this whole of, whole thing. And like Colt Steel says, SF5 often makes me feel just as bad when I win. Absolutely, because sometimes you feel like you don't know what you're doing and you win and you're like, did I really learn anything, you know, and, and it's just like, it's, it's a tough thing to really grasp. Right, you lost like 400 LP between yesterday and today and it was just miserable because I kept facing people way better than I am. And uh, Madame uh, Bunessa said uh, she lost a 1K yesterday. Exactly. Online ranked experience is a miserable experience in fighting games. And if you feel bad and you feel frustrated by it, it is 100% justified. And it is something that, you know, it's not for everybody. The grind is hard, but you know, the desire, the fact that you guys are still playing, still entering this tournament and all acknowledging how frustrating the online ranked experience is, shows that you have that drive. But sometimes the drive is hard to maintain. Again, why it's helpful to have that social environment to have people to help you, to continue to encourage you, to continue to prop you up and discuss strategies. On the come up, it was really helpful that me and my brother who played, we would just sit there all day and be like, this is what we should do with Honda. Hey, I figured out this strategy. Hey, I did this. Wait, let me test this. And we would play and test things and stuff like that. Again, fighting games, are inherently a super social genre of video games even though they're one-on-one. -on -one. By taking that social aspect away from fighting games, we have changed the way fighting games play and how we learn them and it makes it very difficult. And it's something that, again, I say this and I not to discourage people, but to actually encourage people to let you know that no, it's not that other people out there are just like, yeah, I'm super good and they're having great time the whole way through. It's suffering for everybody. And <laughs> your drive to get yourself better, keeping you in there is what you should look at more. Your own personal drive to keep you coming back is what you should take out of it. So even though you're losing, and that is a part of the answer to how to handle losing. When I was losing and whining and complaining, my drive to get to Diamond is what kept coming, kept me coming back because I knew that's where I wanted to get. And regardless of how bad I was playing and how frustrated I was getting during my Gold and Platinum period of um, playing online, that drive kept me coming back. And that's one of the things that you, know, you want to process as a player when you play online. How do you handle losing? The fact that you keep coming back and playing more tells you a lot about yourself as a person. Now, you just have to start being A, willing to learn, and B, willing to start dig deep inside yourself to accept the fact that a lot of the problems are coming from your own personal skill and personal strength. It's one of those things that you have to evaluate yourself 
And it's another reason why fighting games are hard because you really do have to look deep within yourself. You can ask everybody who watched my stream, which is on twitch.tv slash jchenzor, by the way. Though I haven't been streaming a lot, I admit, so there's not much to see there. But I'll be hopefully I'll be streaming again soon. But the time that I finally got out of Ultra Gold into Platinum, when I was in Ultra Gold and I was frustrated and I was cranky and I was miserable, the, 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 the moment that I flipped the switch that got me out of Ultra Gold was when I looked at myself and I said, why do I think I deserve to be better than Ultra Gold? I was like, I don't practice. I play once every two weeks. I don't study matches. I was like, why do I feel like I should be better than Ultra Gold? I am an Ultra Gold player. And so from there, I played more, I studied matchups more, and then I got to Platinum, and I kept growing from there. And that was the key, it was a lot of introspection, it was a lot of understanding that the fault lay largely within myself. And that's one of the things, uh, like I said, that's the drive right there. So if you're losing a lot, but you keep coming back, Learn to look at that drive that you have and that is what's going to get you to process those losses. That's what's going to get you to be a stronger player because if you have that drive to keep playing, that means you have the ability to learn, the willingness to learn, and the strength to learn. And that's the important part right there. Take that aspect of your struggles and use that as a positive of yourself Learn that to see the, the, the strength that you have to keep playing fighting games. That you're not letting these losses get you to quit fighting games. Because you could easily be like, this is dumb and stop and be gone. But you keep coming back because there is a desire for improvement. And that's what you've got to draw your strength from. That's what you have to pull the inspiration from. The inspiration through your own strength, through your own desire to win. So that said game alert back out over here so we've got those two so here's the thing two tournaments in a row if i'm not mistaken dro has gotten second place and two tournaments in a row the interceptor has gotten fourth place <laughs> so this is uh this is definitely a match of the uh, higher order here, top players over here. So now here's the important thing. If you guys have been watching and paying attention, I think these guys have played each other before as well. So let's see how much they remember. In fact, I was gonna talk about it, but I'm not gonna say anything because I wanna see how much these guys remember about each other. Because this is another part of the skill of learning fighting games is remembering these kind of things. So I'm going to wait to see if they remember, because there's definitely very distinct uh, personalities right. that they have uh, when they play um, in Street Fighter V. So we'll see if they can remember these things themselves. <laughs> no worries, Maz Moon. <laughs> it's all good. Uh... So let's do this, Joe. I'm assuming, yeah, Maz Moon is the, the interceptor here. Uh, so let's do this. And see, look at this cool thing. Step, IV, and Star X running some sets. That's cool. And see, that's the important thing. And then have the ability to discuss it. You can do that in the competitors chat of scrimmage and the general chat of Ultra Trend TV. If you also want to, you can join the J Chenzor Discord as well. And uh, there's a lot of matchmaking uh, in there as well. There's a whole matchmaking bracket in there. Uh, if you guys want to, uh, let's see here. Oops. Uh, how do I? I always forget how to get these dang invite links. Where is the invite link? <laughs> I'll get the invite link later for you guys. Okay, back to this match over here. So Dro going against the Interceptor here. I love OG Claw outfit. Okay, gets in there with the slide. So since they're playing right now, they're probably kind of half listening to this. The Interceptor, I've talked about this before, needs to strengthen the neutral game with Vega a little bit. 
What the interceptor likes to do plays a very defensive, very, I, and I don't say this in a derogatory m means, but it's just an indication of how they play, plays a very scared kind of game. Lots of distance, lots of slide, lots of off the wall. Most everything that he plays is a distance game until he gets, for example, the command throw to be able to try to get up the dash into a follow-up command throw. What the Interceptor has to do is start improving the neutral game a little bit. Uh, start playing a little bit more aggressive on the ground and be a little bit more uh, uh, strong in the close-up game. Here we go. Nice! Catches him out of the back dash. Gonna get that juggle on the follow-up! Almost dead! Ooh, oh, with punish with the crouching light punch is gonna take it for the interceptor. So one one here and again It is still two out of three because this is not winners finals just yet So that's the UC TV discord star X. I'm trying to find the Jay Chenzor discord invite link as well. I'll grab that in a second Nice cross up try to jump out of that situation. Maybe try to jump away from the command throw uh, Oh, there you go. Thank you star X. perfect Perf perfect Oh no, yeah, that, that V reversal is very tricky to deal with, especially because Vega has two different uh, timings on that V reversal. Can be very, very tricky to punish. Wow, that combo! <laughs> that was a late button press. That tells you how much hit stun you get from jump attacks. Ooh, sky high claw! But again, you see, you see what I mean about the interceptor. It's sky high claw, poked a couple of times, then immediate back dash, back dash. Again, here we go. Full screen game again, range game for the Interceptor, going off the wall again. Okay, gets in there, go for the EX, off the wall, juggle, oh no, didn't have a meter for the juggle. Oh, he did the wake up, oh! Not like this, not like this, not like this. <laughs> I don't know if the Interceptor forgot it was a command grab, if he actually did push a button, oh. That is a rough situation right there. That is a, heartbroken is a good way to put it. What's the use in fixing what will only break again? Put me back together, I'm still heartbroken. Ooh, try to go for the air and air to air. Yeah, I totally forgot it was a command throw. Is what, <laughs> is what the interceptor said, yep. That was my guess as well. Oh, that's a rough situation. You're like, haha, I baited it out. <laughs> I'm a genius. Oh no! <laughs> I'm a genius. Oh no! Oh, it's one of those situations there. Yeah, so we'll do that a little bit here. Uh... Ooh, nice slide. Gets in there. And yeah, okay, so Interceptor doing a good job here. Okay, see, I love that. The reason why Ace or the Aurora Spin Edge is such a valuable tool for Vega is that it is a nigh impossible with punishing to, uh, move to be with punished. And it is one of the best frontal checks, like stops people from dashing in on you, etc., etc. The weakness of it is that it keeps pushing you backwards, so you end up in the corner like this, and oh God! So very unfortunate for Dro that he got thrown there. And again, it was that same situation. Again, repeatable situations. Make sure you have your meaty. Like I said, if you get thrown by the opponent on their wake up, that is usually the sign of a very, very large mistake. It's such, at the higher levels, it's a very rare thing to happen if the opponent doesn't dash forward or walk forward into throwing you. But just raw reversal wake up throw connecting against you means you uh, mistimed your meaty or <coughs> I'm allergic to wake up throws. There we go. Oh my God, he's not dead yet. Oh boy. Oh no. The interceptor has gotten drove down to pixels twice now and uh, ended up losing that. That's rough. That's rough. Magic pixel. So uh, again, you know, um, it's one of those situations that if you do get thrown, the reason why is if you do not plan to meaty the opponent, if you do not plan to, you know, uh, try to hit them when they're getting up, you're gonna be walking backwards or you're gonna be jumping, you're gonna stay out of their throw range. 
getting thrown on the opponent's wake up is something that should rarely happen. And so Dro right now doing a good job. Empty jump. Interesting. Okay, so Dro going up 2-0, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's that's it right there. Sorry. Forgot to update the score, but that should do it right there. Dro is going to take that one. Uh, 2-0 over the interceptor. So Dro put, putting himself on the path. He's at winner's finals here. So he's in a good position here to hopefully take this event. Because like I said, he's finished second place two events in a row. And how exciting would that be to be able to take his first tournament right now? Yes, you know what I'm doing? I'm putting all the pressure on Dro right now. I'm doing it on purpose. Because this is what Dro is saying to himself right now. Oh my gosh, I'm in winner's finals. This will be my chance to finally take my first sure you can scrimmage. I'm trying to make him nervous right now. I'm trying to put the pressure on him. Because playing through that pressure is a key to becoming a stronger player. It's not a bad idea, to be honest with you. Uh, and then what was the other person? Was Instant Riot. Instant Riot's gonna get you gonna knock you off your feet <laughs> get yourself together darling something something you'll meet <laughs> who on earth do you think you are ah here we go baffin thinking with alex an instant riot with the poison that girl is poison poison uh, I gotta stop singing. Uh, I definitely need to do a karaoke stream to get that out of me pretty soon. But it's gonna be Baffin Thingy versus Instant Riot. Uh, here we go. So probably going to get a little bit of speed up. Okay, here we go. Both of them pretty equal in life here. Now, obviously, what this matchup is going to be is that Instant Riot's going to try to do his best to keep Bath and Thingy away as much as possible. That Crouching Medium Punch, one of the key moves that Laura has. But again, once Alex gets in close, it's scary time. Man. Oh, whoa. I don't think he meant to do that the Fire Range one. Maybe he wasn't expecting the cross up and so he was trying to stay in front and do the short range version from the other side accidentally did the long range version from the the opposite side yeah you see instant riot there is oh no you've got to punish that that might have just been an input error on that neutral jump what probably happened was when he saw the charge up he was like oh shoot neutral jump and then it unleashed early he blocked it and then reacted with the up and then that made him jump. But if you ever block Alex's parry into Lariat like that, you had better make sure you blow him up because uh, that is very negative and he needs to die. And that is the weakness of that move. Now, of course, if he charges up all the way, it's unblockable. So things become very scary. Oh, God! And again, Alex, you know, even though tier-wise is not even, you know, in the same tier as a character like Honda, Alex, Alex still has that ability to blow you up if you do not understand the character a lot. The weakness of Alex, and again, I fall victim to this too because I can't beat Alex because he just scares the crap out of me. But the, the weakness of Alex is that when he knocks you down, if you learn to quick rise or back roll, at least every single time you can, it makes it harder for Alex to apply pressure. His options are kind of limited. Now we're here in the match selection screen here, most likely because uh, Instant Riot wants to change characters. Uh, so that's probably what's happening here. Uh, I don't know if there's, a, there's probably no option for character change in that uh, menu, even if I turn on the character change uh, option. Oh yes, sorry, Oki, Oki, thank you, Mira. See, this is why it's important to have someone watching this and helping me with this, because a lot of times I'll say things like everybody knows what it is. Okay, Oki stands for Okazeme, which means uh, get up and attack. So Okiru and Sameru, are two word Japanese words. Okiru means uh, wake up and semeru means attack. So okeseme, okezeme, it means wake up attack. And so when you call a game something about the okezeme, 
which is now shortened to Oki because it's just a lot easier to say. Uh, Oki describes the meaty wake-up game. The Once someone is knocked down, the game that you play against them as they are lying on the ground. So that's what Oki Zeme Oki is. So instant riot now changing to that Karin, aka Ingrid. Boo! Uh, I don't like Ingrid. Um, but so far, Bath and Thingy doing a good. Yeah, and see, that's the hard part too. It's like, is that the stomp? Is that the oh god? And then it's the stun gun head button that grabs you. And Alex is one of those characters who can okie doke you to death. Can okie doke you to death. Am I stomping? Am I head butting? Am I elbow slashing? Am I dashing? What am I doing? And if you play very defensive against Alex, you will lose. The hard part is that Alex has a lot of very good normal buttons as well. He has great footsies buttons. And so it, you, you get scared fighting him. But the thing about it is you have to be aware that once you knock Alex down, you have to maul him. Alex has no three frame buttons. He doesn't really have a good way to wake up and attack you with the EX. Although I think the EX knee drop actually works pretty decently now. I, see, I'm not even sure and that's a problem. It's a problem that my brain isn't sure exactly how well the EX, the, the EX knee drop works as, oh God! Oh, jeez. Yeah, exactly, J Toys 2. There is no bad questions here. Ask away. Ask everything you want to ask. No dumb questions here. I will answer everything. Maybe even not game related, but mostly game related. <laughs> Please try to keep it as a game related as possible. But again, yeah, see for Instant Riot, one of the hard things is that Alex is just one of those characters that you do have to study. It's, it's one of those things that you have to really get a proper grasp of what Alex is trying to do. Could be a very tricky character to fight against. Uh, and now let's go, and like I said, it's hard for me to give good anti-Alex advice because I lose the Alex super badly too. <laughs> I lose to him so badly. Alex kills me every single time. It's very sad. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Nice jump in over the up fireball too. Now see, there's an interesting situation. You have to know that after Cammy's knee bullet, that knee, that Cammy is minus two. And if she's minus two, that means you should be hitting a button in that situation. So the fact that God Jove got the throw out of that means that Renever was not aware of that situation and did not hit a button with Sakura. And again, this is one of the things that makes Street Fighter V fairly difficult. It's a lot of memorization. It's a lot of memorization of situations. But again, the situations are all repeatable, so it should almost always be the same frame data every time. The one thing about fighting games is it's not magic. There won't just be some times for no reason that it's uh, all of a sudden the frame data changed. If the frame data changes on a move, there's always a reason. It hits meaty. It hits, uh, it's in V-Trigger, and you didn't know it changed when the V-Trigger's activated, a V-Skill activated and charged something up, so on and so forth. Those are the things that you have to know, but that's character knowledge right there. Otherwise, the frame data is almost always gonna be the same. Always gonna be the same, so. Um... It's the cross up and back throw. And God Jove has a lot of pressure. And yeah, the, the throw into the knee bullet is a, is a common situation because it's a it's an easy way to get a meaty. It's an easy way to get a meaty attack. Oh, that should be dead. Yes, into the uppercut. And that was beautiful stuff by Renever right there. Renever with the, you know, shimmy. Walk back and then crouching medium kick uh, caught the, the whiff throw from God Jove. And again, the reason why shimmies work, which is basically you knock someone down and when they get up, you walk backwards and then the opponent instantly reacts with a throw tech. Is because a lot of times you don't tech throws based off of them seeing them walk up to throw you. You throw tech based off of a, a sequence where the opponent doesn't attack. When you don't see the opponent attack, you think that means they're gonna throw. So you just 
muscle memory, you can't help it, you accidentally throw, and then uh, uh, you whip your throw and you die. So that's why walking back works so well. And see right there, with Renever using offensive crouch heavy kick with Sakura, plus on block. God Joe hit a button afterwards and got hit. Renever did not have, however, uh, the proper Sakura uh, post uh, three HK, offensive crouch HK, uh, follow up. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later as well uh, to help out the Sakura players, Renever and uh, uh, JD who was playing earlier. Nice dash up crouch light kick. So again, you know, maybe Renever sensed a little bit of passiveness from God Jove because when you see an opponent is down to no life, they know they can't walk into stray hits anymore. So they tend to become very defensive and they become tend to become uh, passive. And so Renever dashing up in that situation, if that was the read that Renever had, dash up in that situation to apply the pressure, good call on them. If that wasn't the read, that's why it worked. And that's something that Renever is gonna have to keep in mind in the future. And right there, we saw the crouching light punch from Renever in the crouching light punch. Uh, practice those two hit uh, hit confirms. Uh, I'll cover that in a little bit as well. Oh, here we go. Ooh, got hit out of the air and went for the throw. A nice tech, but the overhead, the classic round ender. The classic round ender from Renever gets the overhead. See, I've watched too much Legend of Korra, so now I want to do one of the uh, the sports bending announcer voice at this point. And now Renever is at match point. Can God Jove stave off this, or will he be sent to will he be sent out of the tournament? And we see an ill-advised show Oaken from Renever, but not punished too badly which gives God Jove another chance to keep the pressure going here and to stay alive. He gets the cross up, but goes for the throw instead. And once again goes for the throw. And now God Jove with a chance here. Can Renever take this round and go up 2-0 over God Jove. Jumps away from that cross up, too far away for the fireball. Big opportunity here for God Jove. God Jove chooses not to spend the critical art, saves it, might not have killed, probably would have, but saving all that meter goes for the raw EX drill and it connects and the crouching medium kick is going to keep God Jove alive. No, that's exactly what I'm doing, J Toys. I've been watching so much Avatar and Korra, so now I'm now my brain is stuck in that Korra, uh, that the the bending, the bending sport announcer. <laughs> and here we go. God Jove is on the ropes here and manages to get over the high fireball. And here we go. The cross up confirmed into the critical art. Might not have been Renever's intention. Might have just been trying to go for the show, Oaken. But every once in a while, you accept those kind of execution errors for higher damage. And now God Jove with the back to the wall gets thrown out of that pull again. And now down to just a tiny bit of life. Can our hero do this? Can they make the comeback? Sitting on a lot of meter, one hit in the critical arc should be able to take this. And the dash up from Renever, sensing the fear from God Jove, and Renever is going to take it 2-0. And our hero, God Jove, unfortunately, is going to be out of the tournament in seventh place. Great games to God Jove. I'm sure we'll see him again in a future match here on the Sure You Can Scrimmage. <sighs> All right. That's true. Hey, E Honda is an Ed. I forget. That's a good point. So we really actually could get an Ed and Edmund, an Ed, Ed, and an Edmund or something like that. That's hilarious. <sighs> here we go. It is going to be Ed versus Ed. So this is definitely going to be, we're going to see who is going to be in the driver's seat of this match. Because we are watching some driver's ed right now. 
And here we go. Okay. Sermi with the good. Oh, actually, no, that's Hades with the good start. Swap. There we go. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna see a lot of psycho uppers here. We're gonna see a lot of psycho uppers here if I know Ed players. There's one! Too far! Oh no! Actually, just missed the uh, execution. Uh, Sermi's gonna get it. Nice combo. Gets the knockdown over here into the corner. Woo! Flicker punches all day! And that's risky too, because Flicker Punch, don't forget, is plus on hit. And so uh, I believe it's Ed's turn, but look at this. Hades just getting in there. Trading blows. Uh, JoJo stand because he is. That is a Devil May Cry costume. Uh, what Devil May Car Cry character? I don't know because I am not as familiar with the franchise, but that is definitely the situation there. And you see right there, what uh, Cerny tried to do was land that standing heavy kick and steal a turn by dashing in afterwards. Good call out from Hades though to stop that, but calling out and stealing turns is very important. And I'll explain what stealing turns is uh, after this whole thing is done as well. So I'm writing down little bits of things that I'm going to teach at the end of the match, not in extensive detail, in very short bursts. Oh yeah, he's going to get thrown. Oh god, the wake up! And he had the trigger activated, so that's not the end of it. You're also going to get, get over here! And Hades taking up one. Oh, this is Nero's demon form? Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, Hades taking that one, going up to 1-0. Yeah, no problem, Gato Alejo. Hope, uh, hope that uh, this is working Round for one. you guys, and and and, and you know, you, people are learning as well a lot of this, and that's why it's sometimes important to watch, you know, beginner level matches as well. It reminds me of the stuff that I need to talk about to help educate people into becoming stronger players as well. And go throw into the corner. So now Sermi trying to get uh, some pressure here. So yeah, like they're challenging each other after each other's flicker punches, which is pretty wild, because I'm pretty sure flicker punch is like plus two on hit or plus one on hit. Whoa! Yep, yeah, EX Psycho. Oh, he got him anyway! He neutral jumped to try to bait it, and too far for that. Oh no, the wrong combo. But that's plus. That's plus. You have to be careful. That is why V Trigger 2 is so scary for Ed, is because it gives him the free mix ups. If you block his uh, get over here and he jumps at you like that, Ed ends up plus. And so you can't hit a button afterwards. Again, having to know the situations, the frame data situations, and it's uh, very, very tr uh, tricky. Oh, cool, Goofer, and I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I'm glad you played in it. Now, see, in that situation, whenever you block that from Ed, he is negative. So he puts himself into that mix-up. So that little, that, that you know, the, 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 the lunge punch, the, the, the hold heavy punch, and uh, charge punch you like that. Puts Ed in a non pun that one right there. He's not punishable, but he's negative. So he puts himself in a mix-up situation that you need to take advantage of. However, that is one of the famous situations in which Ed is going to throw out a Psycho EX upper. Oh, I like the idea. Chip him to, oh no, it's not enough. Oh my God, it's not enough. Oh God, the low jab. <laughs> Ooh, it's safe. Okay, there you go. There you go. Okay, 1-1 one, one here in rounds. Sermi wants to tie this up. If he loses this round, he is going home. And when Psycho Flicker is blocked, it is a uh, safe on block now. That was one of the ones that got changed recently. Uh, it changed recently, and I can't remember exactly the frame data of Psycho Flicker on block. I don't think they made it plus. I think they made it uh, minus two on block. Oh, look at that, the double dash, stealing a turn right there. But now this time, uh, Hades waking up with a throw. And it's interesting that to see them go with the two different V-Triggers. Gets the throw, beautiful stuff for Sermi. And you can see the aggressiveness from both players. This is what you're gonna see from Ed players. They're, Ed players tend to be very aggressive and uh, very risk, uh, not averse. What's the, what's the uh, prone? Very risk prone. Because that's kind of what Ed, Ed has to do. 
Ed, outside of that V trigger two, outside of sitting there charging Round for a one. full V skill one, very hard for him to find the opportunities to get himself in plus frames next to you. And because it's because it's hard in that situation, it does spur Ed's to try to be a little more um, aggressive. Yeah, minus two on block, plus three on hit. So it's plus three on hit, it's just that Ed's three frame button is too far away for that to combo. So there you go. So again, minus two on block. So if you block Ed's Psycho Flicker, make sure you take your turn. Ooh, and gets the jump in. Hades back at match point. Here we go. Oof, just ate the jump in. So it gives Haiti. Oh no, that's kind of a little bit of a frame trap right there, but it's such a risk because if you block that psycho upper, uh, you get big damage off of that. Like this. Oh, but too far away. And yeah, that's one of those things that you're going to have to learn. Ed has stubby buttons. He has problems connecting those combos at a lot of uh, uh, ranges like that. Ah, oh, Rice Eater. Is that, is that the same Rice Eater from Canada or is that a different Rice Eater? Rice Eater. Oh, the cross up, and he put himself into that range to get crossed up. He's just gonna eat that jump attack, but he drops his combo, and that's not a bad read right there. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, that's a bad situation right there, and there you go. Hades is going to take it. Oh, you're not the Canadian Blanca player. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure that happens to you a lot, Rice Eater, but congratulations to Hades, and good job to Sermi for the top eight finish. Great stuff to Sermi. I like it, top eight, good stuff. And so here we go, Ren Ever versus Instant Riot. And yeah, seriously, shout outs to everybody who works at Match Reno, good job. Very great service. What a wonderful service that you guys do for the, uh, for the tournament community out there, beautiful stuff. Instant Riot, okay, so if everybody's a fan of Instant Riot because of the poison, now they're not a fan anymore because there is no poison, only Karen. <laughs> but yeah, there are a lot of... Uh, well, there's your Sakura main uh, Amazing Pie. Red Ever's got the... Okay, here we go. And again, so uh, Red Ever's got to work on that hit confirm off of the Crouching Light Punch. It's easy to just go Crouching Light Punch, Crouching Light Punch. But we've got to work on the hit confirm on that because you're leaving a lot of damage on the table in that situation. Ooh, delayed crouching medium kick. And you see that, Renever going for a lot of shimmies. I like that. And, and see, that was good right there. Instant Riot blocked the, the 3HK, which is the offensive crouch heavy kick, and uh, didn't touch a button afterwards, knowing that it's plus on block. Oh, did Renever think that was going to win and kill? Because he just, like, stopped moving after that. E oh, missed the, missed the just frame Tenko. Missed the Just Frame Tenko, and that's hard to do. Uh, I'll teach Instant Riot some tricks on the Just Frame Tenko as well. Uh, ta ta teaching about hit stop a little bit. Um, here we go. <laughs> James Stocks and competitors. Hey, listen, Matt. <laughs> Don't do... You're going to get... I'm gonna get everybody chasing after me for that. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, uh, Shadow HP3. Also follow my Twitter at jchenzor, uh, dot com, at jchenzor as well. That one will, I, I will always be updating there as much as I can. I'm slow sometimes and I'll talk about the registration on the day of, like on Friday, two days before the event, but <laughs> that's, that's what happens. It's hard doing a lot of this stuff. Uh, and oh, really? Instant Riot? I don't know if that was the with option select, but that definitely worked. Crouching medium kick into super. Might have been attempt to go into Tenko and just kind of messed up or something, but it worked out for him. There you go, instant riot. All right, so let's uh, let's get back into the uh, Cora Cora announcer here. 
And here comes Instant Riot fan favorite Instant Riot with the cheering section in the chat. Trying his best as Karen, but Renever is getting in there with that crouching medium kick. The neutral jump and the predictive up fireball gonna work out into the V trigger combo for Renever. Instant Riot now trying to find a way to get in there, but that dash was checked beautifully by Renever with the crouching medium kick. Oh, not expecting the slide after the Rasenha. Gonna give Instant Riot a chance. He goes for the critical art, but no button pressed from Renever, and Renever is going to take match number one. Sakura wins. Once again, this is loser side bracket. Winner of this moves on to the loser semifinals, and the loser of this does get sent home in fifth place. Will Renever be able to advance forward in the loser side bracket or will Instant Riot please his fans in the audience and take this game back to back to advance forward? Find out next week on the, uh, I'm sorry, no. Find out right now as the match continues. Forward, nice. Combo in the corner, getting maximum damage for one bar in the corner. And now back-to-back -back throws from Renever. And Renever still with the corner position. Instant Riot having trouble getting out of there, but sneaks in with the Rasenha, misses the meaty, and gets back thrown on his wake up. And now for the meaty fireball, but due to no getting up off of the ground, that fireball didn't hit Midi. What a jump back right there. And Renever with the incorrect choice for the uppercut for the juggle. Doesn't matter, an input error from Instant Riot is gonna cause that EX Rasenha to come out unwanted, and Renever is now at match point. Oh, the Rasenha flying right over Renever's head, soaring through the sky, not finding its target, and now Renever trying to keep the pressure going, and a light V-reversal right there, not going to find its mark. Instant Riot still trying to get in there, not checking a lot of Renever's dashes. Renever has a lot of propensity to try to dash forward to gain that ground against Instant Riot, and Instant Riot falling for that quite often. A little too far for that. Beautiful combo into the critical art. Clearly this isn't going to kill very early in the round, but definitely gonna catch Instant Riot up in life. Goes for the Rasenha again, blocked and not punished. Instant Riot sitting on that V trigger has not activated. Has to use that and chipping away at damage with the overhead. Here comes the V trigger activation. Instant Riot now trying to find a way in, but Instant Riot has robbed himself of all. Oh no, the second hit didn't hit. What a misfortune for Instant Riot with the correct read, but the incorrect distance. The slide is not going to connect after the Rasenha, and Renever is going to move forward in the brackets, and Instant Riot will be going home in fifth place. So that was Renever 2-0 over Instant Riot. And again, shout outs to everybody participating in this event. Shout outs to everybody playing. I know it's nerve wracking. I know you, it's like tough and, and sometimes you play on stream and it gets very tense and everything like that. But that's kind of the point and hope people are enjoying that. We're gonna be heading to the other side of the loser's bracket, Hades and Interceptor. You. So here we go, Ed versus Vega. Two characters who are decidedly improved in this season. Two characters who last season were, you know, clearly bottom five, not considered very strong. Vega's been improving season after season and he's actually gotten to the point, I mean, Bolt Strike actually won the Salt Mine League, if I'm not mistaken, earlier today with Claw. So Bolt Strike, one of the players from EU, really showing what Claw can do. So uh, a character that has definitely gotten stronger over time. 
The nice thing is uh, about uh, that off the wall strategy that Interceptor uses is that the wall dive has a very big hitbox, so it's hard to miss with that thing. So it can clip a lot of stuff. Players just have to get used to going air to air to stop it. Now this is scary time here because he has V-Trigger. Who he flickered him out of the air. Oh boy, okay, okay. Oh, nice backdash to avoid the slide. Wrong V-Trigger uh, input. Oh, wrong V-Trigger input again. That's, I believe, if you hold down. Oh, God, and he ba with the EX uh, Psycho upper, but no punish. Oh, he's going to be able to combo off of that into raw roll. I have never seen that combo. That was definitely an execution error, but Interceptor will take it any day of the week. <laughs> any day of the week. Oh man, uh, Platinum is tough. Platinum is tough because people are good in that area, but they're also still crazy. So it's really hard to find success. Now, there you see right there, that Vega roll is punishable. Very hard to punish, not because of frame data, very hard to punish because the block stun is deceptively short. You recover from block stun off of Vega's roll so fast that if you want to punish it, you're almost better off mashing because the timing is so weird. So weird. And yeah, intercept. Uh, I mean, if he loses this one, he goes home in fifth place. And as I mentioned, he has gotten fourth place two sure you can scrimmages in a row. So can he try to improve on that rank? We will find out. Oh, you gotta punch that. Yes, there you go. And here we go, V trigger to activate it. Oh no, gonna get caught out of the air. Went for the command throw, but guess what? You're fighting an Ed. You are fighting an Ed. No probability distribution. There aren't a lot of Gs. As Unga Bunga as G is, G is not a beginner friendly character. G is interesting because G's combo routes are very diverse. And he's got a lot of crazy things you gotta learn with that character. And also his defense is bad. So as a beginner, every time you get knocked down as G, a lot of times you can just get mauled to death. So as Unga as he is, he's not exactly the most beginner friendly character in a weird way. All right, King Bazuki, have a good one. Uh, Idom is definitely master rank. Oh, he had that. Oh, no, he didn't have the V-Trigger. But he could have canceled into the super. Hades could have canceled into the super. And again, that's one of the things. Make sure you keep your eye on your meter so you always know how your combos change. Oh, no! Execution error. Oh, he jumped away, but you're going to get caught with that. Oh, Oh, that was an unfortunate situation. He jumped back and escaped, and he's like, wait, it's still punching. I've got to, and then it was too late. Oh, that is an unfortunate... Interceptor has been getting robbed all day long, man. He's been having a lot of these situations. <laughs> oh, man. Does he really rage quit a lot? I did not know. I did not know Idom rage quits a lot. It's tough when you're in Master. You lose and then you lose like seven bazillion points and you win and you get like two points. Uh, it's tough be a, a life of being in that Master rank. Oh yeah, punish that. Beautiful stuff. Good, good punish there. Got the cancel as well. And see again, Interceptor. Oh, that's it. Was that one I wanted to bring? Let's see. Did I have that? I don't know. I have that in there already. Okay. Oh, that's right, Metro M in that CPT tournament. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I remember that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Metro. Okay. Yeah. So the interesting thing. So like I said, one of the the, the interesting things, like I said, fourth place twice for the interceptor, and <laughs> interceptor does not believe. And see, what, what's happening here from the Interceptor, the weakness that he's having is that he is playing the one player game. When he gets the knockdown, he knows going up for the dash, double dashing for the command throw is a good strategy for Vega. So what he's doing is he's playing Vega. He's playing the one player game. What he's not doing is playing the two player game. 
the two-player game being that I'm fighting against Ed. Ed's like the EX Psycho Upper, and Hades has already shown me that he likes the EX Psycho Upper. So instead of going for the dash up command throw, he's going to have to start trying to bait out the EX Psycho Upper a little bit more. That right there is the difference between playing uh, one player and two player, is adapting to who your opponent is. And, uh, and, and, and the character that they are, and making sure that you are cognizant that they want to do these kind of- Oh, what? <laughs> he snatched him right out of the air with a Psycho Snatcher! Oh, the cross-up! Oh yeah, you gotta punch those rolls. If you let Vega get away with rolls like that, life is not gonna be fun fighting against Vega. And that's another one too, that's a hard move to punish. But you gotta learn how to punish it. I think Psycho Upper should be able to chase it down in time. If I'm not mistaken, it is pretty negative. Yeah, no problem. Have a have a good one, uh, 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 Eli and Mira. Take care, you guys. Uh, Hot Dog Tanaka. Yes, this is uh, Mr. Chen, the commentator from Street Fighter. <laughs> I am a part of the Street Fighter game. Yeah, so 1-1 one, one now between these players here. So 1-1 uh, one, one between Hades and Interceptor. Was that? Yeah, okay, there you go. Right back into there. Thank you, Hot Dog Tanaka. Appreciate that very much. Mm, into the corner. Oh, missed that meaty throw. Like I said, getting thrown on the opponent's wake up means you made a mistake. And that's one thing that you have to uh, understand as well. And that is a very important thing to, to, to grasp. Even getting hit by a button on your wake, on their wake up, doesn't mean you messed up. But if you get thrown on their wake up as a reversal throw, that usually indicates that you made a mistake at some point in time. Oh yeah, keeping himself safe off of that. And chasing down, and that's gonna kill. Interceptor is at match point to get in the top four once again. Can Hades prevent this from happening? They really should not do that, Shin Air Bear. Nobody wants to see me in a Leotard. Trust me, nobody wants to see me in a Leotard. Right, off the wall again. And you see right now, Hades is having trouble dealing with the off the wall. A lot of the times to fight Vegas off the wall, you want to go air to air with him. See if he flies towards you and then do a jumping medium punch. I think with Ed actually punches up. So you can do just, there's that, there's that EX Psycho Upper again. And yeah, so that's that problem right there uh, with the V reversal from Vega is that he has the one flip or the two flip uh, distance. And you have to react to it. It's, it's a hard read and that's what makes it actually pretty good for Vega, so. Um. Ooh, that hit so meaty that he actually got the follow up off of the Psycho Flicker. That was pretty sick. All right, back to the full screen here, even in life. Trying to use the fireball to get in. That's a smart decision from Hades. Controls all that space, lets you dash in afterwards. So that's why the Interceptor goes for the off the wall again. The Interceptor gonna keep with that strategy. And again, not it's working. So I'm not going to say that he needs to change the strategy or anything. The strategy is working pretty decently for the Interceptor right now. Yep, there's that off the wall. Nine seconds left on the clock. Ah, see? There you go. The Interceptor was listening <laughs> to my commentary. He was listening to the commentary, and I love it. Seeing the Interceptor dash up after that and block the EX Psycho Upper and have the punish brings a tear to my eye because that right there, ladies and gentlemen, was one of the situations where he has managed to start playing the two-player game. And when you start doing that, that is one of the biggest walls that you will run into when you play fighting games. One of the first walls that you run into is not playing the two-player game. 
and now you saw Interceptor dash up and block because in all the previous weeks, Interceptor has used that a lot. Knockdown, dash up, command throw. Hades hit him twice with the Psycho Upper, EX Psycho Upper. This time, Interceptor blocked it, punished. That's the adaptation. That's learning that you're fighting another human and your opponent human will have patterns and they will try to make the adjustments. And that right there is the power of fighting games. That is where you start advancing to the next point of fighting games. Yeah, Hades, uh, go, like I said, going air to air will probably help stop that a little bit. Yeah, see, that's the tricky thing. As a Vega player, you can't really use the wall dive too much at higher levels, which is what makes this tough for the Interceptor right now because the wall dive is working so well for him that this is what's going to give him success for a while. But what he's going to have to do is he's going to have to find a little bit more to add to the game because eventually he's going to start oh, running to the players who will blow that up very well. And once that happens, then he's going to have a little trouble. Uh, we just Benny Hilled our way into a stun and Dro. Dro is a man on a mission right now. Dro is, is a man on a mission. Yeah, see, there you go, the Interceptor. When you get the Super Gold, you never land a wall dive. And that's the thing. So that's the area that you're going to have to learn just a little bit. I mean, the, the, that, that, I didn't change the screen, but it was actually, we never got that round. It was the, it was the crazy thing going there. Yeah, Dro is a man on a mission right now. Like I said, as much as I've been impressed with uh, Interceptor taking fourth place, uh, uh, top four, three weeks, three events in a row, Dro has made top two two weeks in a row and is at least guaranteed top three this week. So if he can win this, he's guaranteed top two, three events in a row. If he loses this, he's at least guaranteed top three. That is super impressive and I like that. And I'm glad to see that. Oh, the parry, but what? That is just a matchup knowledge thing. Laura's invincibility on her V reversal lasts a little bit longer. So if you're an Alex player and you parry Laura's V reversal, you've got to hold the Lariat just a little longer to be able to punish it. That kind of sucks. <laughs> If you are baffin, you are not happy about that at all. You are not happy. You're like, come on, man. But again, that's just one of those things. Now you go to the lab and you test it out. And see, after the back, after you get, uh, you can't escape by Alex. Um, that was nice cross under there. Didn't have the full combo. Uh, standing heavy kick is really the only meaty thing that you can do. If you fight against Alex and you get power bombed like this, hold back on your wake up and make sure you quick rise. Quick rise and hold back. Some characters can walk away from the heavy kick and it just misses. Alex does not have a low that reaches far enough to hit you there. The only thing he can do to punish the back walk potentially is dash up and low or dash up and power bomb you again if your character is too slow with the back walk speed. However, uh, you can also try to react to the dash. So if you hold back after the power bomb, you rob Alex of a lot of Alex's power and mix up potential. You walk backwards and if you see him dash, you check it with a light punch or something like that. But again, that's just one of those things that unless you study Alex like I didn't, which is why I kept losing to him, if you don't study that, you don't know that and you're going to get beat up. So those are little things that you learn about characters little by little. So against Alex, especially mid-screen, if you're in the corner and you get power bombed, things are a little bit different. It's scarier. He's got better meaty options. But otherwise... We've seen Baffin Thingy do that. We've seen Baffin Thingy do that before as an okie doke. That power bomb, I mean the flash chop in the super. Trust me, I have gotten hit by that myself. That is a common thing that you will see 
Uh, Alex's do just like you will see uh, Balrog's do turn around punch into super a lot. These are okie dokes and they will work in these situations and it's not something that you want to rely on. But light flash chop, oh god, yeah, you are going to get smacked. So there you go, Baffin thinking, tying this up, oh boy. See, now the nerves are starting to pump up for Dro. Because like I said, Dro really wants to take one of these events. So you won the first game with a perfect, pretty dominating, and now Baffin thingy is coming back. So this is where your brain starts to play tricks with you. Because now you're like, crap, has he figured me out? Shoot, what did I do to win the first time? What am I supposed to do? And you really want to win. So your brain starts playing tricks on you. So this is the tricky part. And again, uh, Alex's medium uh, fl uh, slash elbow is actually minus six or seven on block, so you need to punish that with Laura. It is definitely punishable. It's one of those things that you'll have to learn how to do, but it's hard to recognize which slash elbow he does sometimes. There we go, the, the reset, mix up. Gotta punish that, yep. Good punish by Baffin Thingy. Oh God, he charged all the way, but I like that drove forward jump. A lot of people back jump away from that unblockable and get hit anyway. And the chop overhead from Baffin Thingy. There you go. Round two. Uh, <laughs> Julie, do the thing! Do the thing! Alright, here we go. Throw. Regular throw, and yeah, you know, even though Laura has a command throw, regular throw is good because if it misses and they neutral jump, you won't get punished for it. You can medium punch them out of the air in time. Activation. Now here comes potential Alex robbery. Punish that. And actually, I like the back throw punish there because it switches sides. But remember, you can also, with Laura, always choose which side you want to be. And there it was again, the invincibility of Laura lasting long enough. But again, with Laura, for a strong punish, you can always choose what side she gets. Because if you combo into the medium elbow with Laura, punch will switch side, kicks keeps you on the same side, or it could be the other way, and I can't remember right now. One of them, one of the follow-ups keeps you on the same side, the other follow-up switches you sides. So you will always get to choose which side Laura gets to be on, on punishes and good hit confirms. But here comes Alex, and Alex, like I said, even though people consider him not one of the stronger characters, if he's a character that you don't know how to fight, he is terrifying! And I love the neutral jump light kick from Baffin thingy for the cross-up to stop the, the, the dash under. That was beautiful. Oh no, he's just gonna dash it and get hit. Okay, dangerous time. And you see right there? So when I talk about situations being repeatable, Dro got, and this is three out of five, so Dro is still in this. But when Dro got the heavy volt charge, out of the air and knocked him down, you saw him walk up and he wasn't sure what to do. He kind of had like this little unsure situation. So he didn't have the meaty, he didn't have an EX thunderclap or anything like that. Instead, he just kind of, uh, you know, walked back and forth. But again, if you ever volt charge someone out of the air with a heavy volt charge, the frame data is the same 100% of the time. So you should practice your meaty setup in that situation. There is always a standard meaty situation. If you throw out an EX Thunderclap, even if they quick rise and it's not a true meaty, you get pressure, etc., etc. Those are the kind of things that you want to practice. All right, so Dro, you can see once Dro gets the pressure going, Dro has really, uh-oh, uh-oh, Baffin thingy dropping stuff, but there we go, parrying the jump. And this is one of the hardest things to deal with when you fight an Alex. If you're not familiar with Alex, when he activates a V trigger, he punishes you for hitting buttons because the parry requires no timing. So what happens is when Alex activates the V trigger, you have to go into supreme scared mode because a lot of Alex players are going to throw out that V trigger parry all over the place. And that is another thing that Dro is going to have to learn is using the thunder clap. Oh no, a dropped combo. There we go. You see, there you go. Now he should have went for the, oh, he went for the EX. That's right. I don't think you can choose on the EX. The EX is a standard foul. Love the air reset. 
so you don't have to worry about uh, quick rise or back roll. Here we go, the pressure and gets the meaty, even though, now, what's interesting there, even though he got that meaty there and it traded and he got the stun, Alex is not a three frame character. So against the three frame character, he would have lost. So you want to shore up that meaty timing a little bit. Make sure that you have the meaty timing. So even though it traded with Alex there, and that was good for him, if a three frame character had woke up with a three frame button, he would have lost and uh, gotten hit and not landed that meaty. So while that was a victory here, it is something that he has to work on as uh, as uh, as he continues to play this game. But of course, practicing your meaties is hard, and here comes Bath and Thingy, getting very close. Oh, the crush out of the air! You know, everybody always says, Alex has terrible anti-airs, but you know. Oh, here we go. Not close to stun anymore. Dro with the pressure misses the meaty. So Dro is missing the meaty, but he has an opportunity here again. What's he gonna do in this situation? Yes, EX Thunderclap, you see? That time he had it. So just like I said, the, the heavy volt charge, he got the E, the, oh no, the parry, watch out for the parry. Oh, the death, the death off of the parry. Alex, when he activates oh, that, the trigger is terrifying. And there you go, Baffin Thingy is the one putting himself into winner, into grand finals. Great match between these players here. Woo, boy! Woo! Oh, Alex! Alex! Low tier Alex! No, Alex is not low tier. I don't care what anybody says. I refuse to believe Alex is low tier. I refuse to believe. Alex is low tier. Julie, do the thing. There we go. Yeah, and that's why I can't have Jasmine be an outdoors cat either, even though she really wants to be outdoors because uh, black cats definitely get harmed a lot out outdoors. Let my beauty here we go. Okay, here we go. Oof. Wow. Rin ever just going in now. Okay, good cross up by intercept. The interceptor. And that's one of those things when you're in the corner, you always want to watch out for Vegas trying to wall jump to get out of there, but the interceptor has to. Think twice about using that air V trigger like that with the rose if it puts him in the corner. Yes, it's not punishable, but it puts you in a negative, it's such a bad position because you're negative and now you're in the corner. So it's uh, not recommended at all. Definitely want to hold back from doing that. And yes, it's a powerful tool. It's a great tool to have, but Again, like I said, it will make you lose matches. In fact, that last match right there, I would dare say he lost entirely because of that down rose into the corner. He had gotten himself out of the corner, then cornered himself, and then everything went downhill from there. And so that's something to note right there. So again, you're gonna be like, man, I lost because Sakura's pressure is so good. Actually, the loss came because you chose to rose, uh oh, what is your damage combo? No! The Interceptor did not have his big damage combo on hand and uh, ended up not getting that, so that's gonna be a problem as well. But yeah, that last, the first round was lost solely off of that rose into the corner. And that's one of those things that you're gonna have to, you know, realize and figure yourself out. You can't necessarily, see that's again, part of the hard part about fighting games is you'll lose to the Sakura pressure in the corner and you'll be like, Sakura pressure is so good. But no one is around to tell you that, no, you lost because you rose yourself into the corner. And again, this is coming back to my, you know, my, my soapbox, which I was saying that fighting games as a lone endeavor are hard. You know, having a social environment to be able to teach you those things is so important. And when fighting games don't, when you play fighting games in a non-social environment, you, it's hard to learn those things. It's hard to learn those things. Uh, yes, Grinko TV, this is the beginner's tournament. Uh, next one most likely will be two weeks from now. I've been doing this every other week 
to make sure that I don't burn myself out. So uh, that's how it'll be so far. There we go. Oh yeah, combo time. Oh no. Maybe thought he had the EX meter. Didn't notice he didn't have the EX meter. Probably tried to go for an EX fireball for the extended combo, but didn't have it. Just came out with the regular one. Nice little forward dash there. Although Interceptor should have been able to hit that still. Tried to forward dash. Got caught by the heavy kick. And yeah, that's scary because you're not sure if Sakura is going to go for the ground fireball or the air fireball. But if you see her charge, you may want to try to slide. You know, she could release it early and hit you out of your slide. But the slide can be a way to shut it down. And you'll get the crush counter into the hard knockdown so you'll have a setup afterwards. Tried to rose her out of the air. Missed it. Not fast enough. Going to get clipped by that fireball. Which means Renever is at match point to put Interceptor at fourth place for the third event in a row, for the third week in a row. And so Interceptor, again, right now, the nerves are kicking in. The, what's happening is Interceptor's going, man, I don't want to be fourth place again. Dang it, the fourth place curse. And so the nerves are coming up here. And you don't think that Fudo was thinking about that every time he got second place? You don't think Fudo was thinking about that every single time? Oh, he definitely was. And so this is part and parcel of learning to play in tournaments, is how to get over these nerves, how to not psych yourself out like that. Play every match like it's just another match. Interceptor doing a good job here in this fight right now. But again, the weakness of Interceptor right now, I'm going to tell you right now, is, is clearly the neutral. Yep, there it is. Renever is going to take that right there. And Interceptor, look, fourth place, three sure you can scrimmages in a row. You know, while the Interceptor may look at it and be like, oh god, fourth again, and be frustrated with himself, on my side of things, I'm going to be going like, hmm, okay, fourth again, good shit, good job, dude, good job. Like, because honestly, uh, fourth place consistently, three events in a row, is a very, very strong performance. It means you are on the cusp of getting to that next level. So, like I said, the thing that Interceptor needs to do, like I said, I, I can tell you right now, I can tell you exactly right now what Interceptor's weakness is, it's the neutral. And uh, although he's not, uh, he didn't get first place, I will briefly go over Vega's neutral towards the end of this, because I want to help more people. I will go in depth into the person who wins the tournament, helping them out. But for everybody else, I just want to help out little things here and there because the goal is to improve, not to gatekeep people to be like, you can't get advice unless you win. <laughs> like, that's not the point of this. I want everybody to improve. So I'm going to help everybody that I can. Renever and Dro SFV. Yeah, what's interesting is like standing heavy kick and standing light kick are very far for Sakura. Those are the main ones that you got to watch out for. But again, so for Interceptor, for Mazmoon, uh, when you are playing, the problem wasn't Sakura's range and her buttons. The problem was unchecked dashes. She dashed at you a lot, and uh, that is something that Renever is very good at. Renever is very aggressive with the forward dashes. If I had played Renever in an online match, I would be like, oh, this is a forward dasher. This guy likes the forward dash. And so as Vega, you got to start checking those forward dashes, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But throwing out Aurora spin edges raw is a very good strategy against that. But here we go. Dro, Renever, going at it here. So let's see what Dro can continue to do with this Laura. Like I said, uh, improved Laura from last week. But, you know, what we've seen from Dro is that his Laura is clearly very strong once he gets the Laura Schmix going. But he's having trouble a little bit in the neutral, and then when he gets locked down, it gets a little tough. Dro's winning rounds have almost always been Laura lockdown, Laura craziness. Yes, he did do a good job at staggering the dashes, for sure. That's one of the hardest things to deal with. Uh, but like I said, I'll explain that in just a little bit on how you can fight that. 
Okay, see, here's Dro trying to get that aggression going. Goes for the forward jump. So nice forward dash for, from Renever to break that. And see, there you go. Renever with that forward dash again. So again, these are things that I'm reading here from the players. And oh, the armor! Okay, this gives Dro a huge opportunity! And there it is, the jumping light kick. So even though Renever did get his jump away, oh, he should have hit a button on his way up. He should have hit jump back light punch or something like that. Not gonna happen. So Dro gonna take that round there with the clutch armor EX elbow. And right there, Renever jabbing after blocking the light elbow. So important to make sure you are taking your turn. Make sure you take your turn. Oh, the EX uppercut! Not a true block string, so finds the gap in there. Anytime there's a gap, oh my god, the fireball hit twice, or was that just because it like he got vulnerable somehow? I'm not sure, but that was an unfortunate situation. Yeah, you can tell what fireball it is. Uh, the, when she charges up, she's either looking up or looking straight. Yep, you saw her, she was looking up. There is a visual giveaway for Sakura. It's not a true guess. You can look at her face and see which one she's going to do. Uh, which one are you talking about, Mira? Which part are you talking about? And there you go, Dro taking the first game. Laura wins. <laughs> Actually, J Toys, if you have Netflix. Avatar The Last Airbender is all on Netflix as well. You can binge it on Netflix. Uh, and I thought, uh, Eli and Mira, I thought you guys went to go eat. Maybe you're back already Round because one. you can't eat outside. Right. So yeah, you probably brought the food back in there, but uh, EXDP through the stand, eight punch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep, 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 okay. Gets the combo into the Tatsu. And it's interesting, Renever, you know, you see a lot of overheads at round ends, you know, just to get the win. But Renever throws out those overheads a lot in, in pressure situations. And I like that because it, it creates antsy opponents. It creates annoyed and antsy opponents. But you see right now, Renever's biggest strength, honestly, is the movement, is the forward dashes, is the back dashes. And movement is one of the key things, and it's it's a clear why Renever is in gold. And uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm sure Renever. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's gonna take long for Renever to get to ultra gold, uh, to super gold. To be honest with you. Ooh, there we go. Good combo confirms. Nice reaction, and just the mistimed ex command throw for Dro. That was unfortunate situation. Dude, Sola, it's so good. It's so good. I don't want to be one of those people that is is like is kind of like the stereotype of the Avatar Last Airbender fans, but it's so good. <laughs> oh, I love that. Walk up in the button, and you see how it got him to throw, and then the throw, and he switched back to the button. That was beautiful stuff from Dro. The mix-ups, he walked up, did a delayed medium punch, got the counter hit, which opened up the walk-up throw, which opened up the walk-up medium punch in the counter hit again. Beautiful two-player game right there. Very, very smart decision-making by Dro. This is the kind of thing that you have to do. While that can be one player -y and set play to go back and forth between hit and then throw and then hit. You know, once once you get into the advanced levels of the uh, two-player mind games, that was sick as well, by the way. The whip and still punishing the uppercut. But you'll get to the point where sometimes they'll do hit and then hit and then hit and then hit and then go for the throw. And uh, that's the advanced levels right there. But that takes you learning to read your opponent's pattern or having fought somebody who you fought before so you know what their pattern already is. Nice V reversal. Do not give Sakura the momentum. You've got one more hit to take this, but Dro is nervous now, playing very passive, and this is when Renever is going to get those forward dashes in there. And so this is a dangerous situation because he's also one combo away from losing. Oh my god, that could have been it right there. <gasps> that, see? Too much nerves right there from Dro. Too much nerves right there from Dro. You, I, I said it. I said it. And again, as a commentator, this is where my strength as a commentator lies. Obviously, I miss a lot of frame data stuff because I just know this is plus or whatever. And I'm like, I don't even remember what this is. 
But the thing about it is from an emotional standpoint, from an emotional read, Round from one. the em empathic sense that I have on players, I'm really good at detecting how players are feeling. And I told, I said it right at the end there, Dro is playing nervous and he's playing passive. And I really felt like even though Renever was down in life and had to make the comeback, I felt like that was Renever's game to lose based off of what, how Dro was playing. It's one of those things that as a player you have to be careful of, but it's who oh, he did it again, the EX uppercut off of that thunderclap, that was really cool. And, uh, yeah, Colt Steel, that's why I do it. Because, not that I think that it's wrong to do the frame Tata commentary, it's just that there's a lot of guys out there who are super good at that already. David, Sejam, a lot of those guys are excellent at the frame data commentary. So, you know what, I'll let them handle that. I'll handle the empathic part of commentary. Because to me, that part is almost just as much important. And like I said, you could read the situation there. You could read the situation from Dro, and that's how you do this. So Renever, like I said, uh, he's good at the forward dashing and the back dashing. And if you play scared, you are going to fall victim to the forward dashing type of play. The style of play that Renever uses was going to be very effective to beat a scared style of play. You see right there, the forward dash again. And so, like I said, the problem right now that Dro is having is that uh, Renever is also being very good at blocking Dro's jump-ins. Okay, finally he got the hit here. And now he drops the combo, the nerves, the nerves, the nerves. And so, uh, whenever he does get the cross-up, but it's blocked, Dro's tendency is to go too much into the hit confirm because it's the safe option. Now is the time to switch up. Now is the time to go for cross up, wait, command throw. Just to make sure if they get hit, they, that your command throw doesn't whiff. But that's the part right there. So now what Dro has to do is start expanding the mix up game that Laura has from just hit confirming standing medium punch to now adding in the command throw or adding in, and then after the throw, Start adding in the shimmy, etc., etc. See, he's so good at that hit confirm right now. That part of his game is amazing. That part of his game is very well. And even on block, he's good at switching to the crouching medium punch afterwards to keep the pressure going. But what he has to do now is figure out a way to get in the command throw. The way Dro has been getting the command throw in has been off of a uh, hit elbows off of light punch elbows hit into command throw that's when he's been getting the command throws he has to now start peppering it into his mix-ups and you see right there Renever off of the empty jump from Dro with the forward dash the back dash into the forward dash back dash into the forward dash again from Dro he does such a good job switching from fireball, distance game, defensive game, to all of a sudden dashing forward with the crouching light punch. Renever's strength clearly lies in the neutral right now. His neutral is very strong, has a lot of very good hit confirms. In fact, I am actually very surprised that Renever is just a gold player. I think he has a lot of strength in his game. And I really like what I see out of Renever. But the thing about it is, if you start noticing, and what a lot of other stronger players will start noticing, is that Renever back dashes into forward dash. You can all you can read a lot of those forward dashes from Renever because it is predicated by a back dash. Alright. So back dash, forward dash. You saw right there? You saw that from Renever? Just like I had called already. Walk back, forward dash, back dash, and he saw the jump. But it's always that. It's That's what Renever's strategy is. It's back and then forward. Back and then forward. So there you go. See, these are things that you have to learn to read from your opponents. And it's a tough thing to do, but there you go. Uh, shout outs to Renever. And, you know, tough stuff for to Dro, and, and Dro did say that the connection wasn't great. Now, 
this is obviously not any sort of officially sanctioned event or anything, net code is going to happen and net code is going to be a problem. And when net code is a problem, I will say this much, it makes checking dashes that much harder. If the net connection is bad, that will make it that much harder for Dro to check the forward dashes. So, you know, him saying that is not him making an excuse. And I don't want anybody out there going, oh, excuses, bad net code or whatever like that. It's a true situation, it happens. We know what game we're playing. We know this is Street Fighter V and that you're gonna get that situation. But because of the teleports, that makes checking forward dashes that much harder, which makes Renever's game that much scarier. Definitely that much scarier and hard to deal, hard to deal with. But again, like I said, I do like what Renever's doing, and I do like the neutral game that uh, he's using. I really think it's a very strong neutral game because of the movement. It's very movement-based, and you have to do that. And Renever, you're up. Uh, but see, you know, he says that he runs away and throws fireballs as much as he can, but in the chat, that's what he says. But again, he also has the bravery for dashing forward. I'm going to tell you right now, forward movement, the reason why I'm so impressed with what, with what, with what Renever is doing, forward movement is the hardest part of all neutral, of all fighting games, because it's scary. Because anytime you dash forward, anytime you walk forward, you know what you're not doing? You're not blocking. And because of that, that becomes terrifying. And that's why the fact that Renever is so willing to forward dash all the time, to me, is so impressive. And so here we go. It is going to be Dro going up against... Uh, not Dro. Uh, it is going to be Baffin Thingy going up against Renever. Here we go. Okay. And like I said, this is scary. And I'm terrified too, because if Baffin Thingy wins this thing, uh, I'm probably gonna lose. Because <laughs> I can't fight this character. <laughs> Dude, I keep doing that to Drill. I iced him last time too, and now this one, here we go. We're going to. Uh, now I'm rubbing it in here. Oh no, he drops the combo. Oh, he let it go before it got to the uh, unblockable. Oh, there we go. Nice. And again, remember, he doesn't have to pick high or low. So there you go. Forward jumping that is so important. Oh, no, he drops the combo. But yeah, got to watch out. Sakura's EX Fireball. I don't know if it's plus, but it's very fast recovery. I think it is plus. Let me double check. EX Hadouken is plus one on block. Yes, plus one on block. So you have to be careful of that. Okay. Now here we go, Renever trying to keep the pressure. Oh god, the Lariat! Oh, did he get him? He did! Nice! Nice! Nice juggle there, good damage, pow! Now I did notice that Thingy likes to use the meter whenever he can- Oh yeah, baited you jumping but was too far away to catch with the up knee. Oh, that's a problem. Here he comes, Renever. Here comes Renever. Oh, he charged it all the way up! Oh, use the EX. Use the EX for guaranteed. Use the EX for guaranteed. I think the regular one just misses that way. And here comes the pressure from Renever. Oh, man. Can he make this comeback? Oh, okay. Was not expecting Baffin Thingy to go for the jump back or the neutral jump in the corner. But that is something you have to be aware of. People like to jump in the corner. It's a very common defensive tactic. So it's just one of those things that you'll have to get used to. Uh, oh yeah, use the light knee. Okay, there you go. All right, using that fireball to get in. And see, that's also another thing too, is that when you see Sakura charge up that straight fireball, She's going to use that to get in because it's two hits. She, oh no, but no quick rise. You gotta make sure you quick rise. Oh, Renever with a second lease on life, the double dash and see, there you go. Beautiful stuff for Renever gets the back throw. Dangerous times here, misses the meaty. Problems, oh God, watch out. Oh, reads it, doesn't get the juggle. Gonna give Renever another chance to wake up. EX uppercut. No, for Baffin Thingy. Oh, the, la the 
but the desperation uppercut taking it. Oh, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, again, dropping those combos again. And, you know, when those stuff happens, you'll learn and you will learn not to do that again in the future. But as a reminder to everybody, Renever is in loser side of the bracket. Because Renever is in loser side of the bracket, he needs to win two sets of three out of five. So Renever has a long way to go. Renever has a long way to go in this matchup. Yeah, that juggle isn't free. You have to know how long to hold and just kind of aim it properly. Oof. Ten games yet. Ooh, triple dash! Baffin thing he's saying, you know what? You're not the only one that can forward dash, but you'll see right now that Renever gets a lot of damage off of those forward dashes. See? There it is again. And you know, Baffin thingy, I'm pretty sure, was trying to check it with the standing heavy kick, but you don't check forward dashes with big buttons like that. That's not the goal right there. The stun right there for Renever. <laughs> with all the stomps. Yeah, you gotta remember too, the regular stomp is punishable, and Sakura with that standing light kick will probably be able to punish it at almost every range possible. Because a lot of times when he hits you on the knees, when he stomps on your knees, I think he's still minus four, and so he should be punishable by Sakura standing light kick. Yeah, light kick elbow is definitely safer. Light kick, uh... But look at this, Renever. Renever has so much aggression, and I like the aggression, and that might have been a little bit of a uh, of a lag situation there that caused Renever to drop that combo. I did see that little freeze. However, that can be exclusive to just the spectator sometimes. Activation, side switch. Nope, back to the original side. Oh, beautiful. Okay, that was... You know what, Renever is a better anti-Alex player than I am. Because the empty jump into throw was the perfect thing to do for a V-Trigger Perry Happy Alex. That, I didn't even think of doing that. I would have gotten my jump in parried and I may have died. So shout outs to Renever, beautiful oh stuff. That's playing the two player game right there. That is playing the two-player game. A lot of times you jump in, and you're like, I jumped in, he's not anti-airing, time to kick. And that's just autopiling, but he had the wherewithal for the empty jump into the throw. Beautiful stuff to Renever. And like I said, you know, a lot of what Renever's doing, I'm surprised he's still in gold and not in, in super gold right now or ultra gold. But you know, it's nerves, it's things that happen, and you know, the nice thing about events like this is you can get your groove going, and that's the important thing as well. Getting your groove going is important to help you even in the online ranked matches. But let's not count Baffin Thingy out just yet, because Baffin Thingy has been playing very solid all tournament long as well, and is also gold ranked. So both of these players. Also, another thing from Renever is that Renever is very meter dependent as well. He likes to go for the EX Fireball, and here we go. Gotta watch out for the parry. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a more damaging combo Alex can do. Ah, yes! That's stealing the turn! And that's the danger. That's the scary part when you hold back after those situations. But I'm pretty sure Alex has a better combo he can do after the back, after the, the Lariat, V-Trigger Lariat. I think he can do like me and the Flash Chop into Critical Art. Yeah, who did send Renever to losers? It looks like Pepe says he actually lost his first match, which is wild to me, but there you go. Counter hit Sakura Light Tatsu doesn't give her a combo, I don't believe. I don't believe that gives her a combo. Actually, it might, because Light Kick Tatsu would be three on counter hit, so she might get a combo off of that. So that's something that uh, Renever is gonna have to learn as well. Old punish. Punish, punish. Yeah, see, that's why it came to my mind, because I could have swore I've seen that before. So there you go, yes. Overhead. Oh, the EX Fireball, but no uppercut confirmed, but that's going to be an uppercut confirmed. Renever at the point where he could just take one more, the meaty throw. And Renever with a great read on the meaty throw. Been going for so many meaty, meaty crouch medium kicks into fireballs. Baffin thing he's scared. Got caught by the throw. Renever now at reset point. Look at this. Renever. Yeah, okay, but that was a. Uh, 
That was Light Tatsu, but I don't know if that one was confirmed right there. I don't know. If, it's like weird. Like the timing on it is strange. I'm going to have to test it out. I'll have to test it out if it's just any time that Raw hits, it's very easy to do. Nice jump in. Big damage for Baffin Thingy. Surprised he didn't go for the critical art off of the flash chop. Here we go. The confirming to the uppercut for Renever. Nice dash up throw. Again, the movement, but... I like Baffin Thingy checking because the throw into the back throw into dash is not real. Baffin Thingy should be able to take it. Yeah, there we go. Flash chop into super that time for max m -m 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 maximum damage. And there we go. Baffin Thingy getting on the board. It is two to one right now. Baffin Thingy trying to stay alive and trying to beat up on James here because James is terrified against Alex. Oh man. <laughs> you guys can't even imagine in my heart right now I'm like, I don't want to fight Baffin Thingy. I don't want to fight, fight oh, Baffin no. Thingy. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> Ooh, checking the forward dash. And uh, oh again. And Renever's actually getting the forward dash in the button. That's why he's getting counter hit. There we go. So now Baffin thing is doing a good job checking those forward dashes. All right. Oh, just out of range, but no whiff punish there. And again, that crouching medium punch. Great check on the forward dash. And so yeah, Renever's gonna have to try to learn a little bit of that hit confirm right there. Uh, but I, I, I don't know how close she needs to be for the hit confirm off of crouching light kick. Oh, jump forward, beautiful. Great reactions, like I said, jump forward. A lot of people jump backwards and end up killing themselves. Nice, but that wasn't a counter hit. Good throw from Renever. Can he do another comeback? Misses his medium, crouching medium kick. Here comes the jump in. And the, again, the standing medium kick. So right now, what Baffin Thingy is doing right is that Baffin Thingy is throwing out a lot of buttons. Part of the triumvirate of footsies is controlling space hitting buttons to prevent the forward movement, just like this. Baffin Thingy has gotten a very strong read on Renever's forward dash. So now, while I love that, oh, block that, please. Okay, three, and now punish, there you go. While I do like Renever's uh, forward dashing movement, now what happens is you have to recognize that the opponent is checking you. So how do you defeat opponents checking you, your forward dash like that, with punish or jump? because now they're checking the forward dash. If you jump, they'll come out with a button that you jump over, and then you can punish that potentially. So that's where you have to switch that up. Oh, the EX uppercut, I like it, I like it. Oh, no punish, no, no punish off of that crouching heavy punch. Oh God, there it is again, the forward dash. And like I said, you can see it, Baffin Thingy is punishing the forward dash. Oh yeah, you gotta be careful, like I said. Heavy kick after the command throw is what you always have to watch out for. Baffin thingy, tying it up. Two to two, it is now Baffin thingy on tournament game. Ooh boy. And here we go. Time for the nerves for Renever. And like I said, right now, the weakness that Renever has is that Renever has not adapted to Thingy's gameplay. The forward dash is getting him killed. So he has to be careful about the forward dash a little bit more now and try to find other attack vectors. Look up attack vectors on youtube.com slash uh, TV for my first attack on attack vectors and understand why attack vectors are so important. If forward dash is your only attack vector and your opponent is starting to stop it, you need to add another attack vector. Now there, right there, went Renever had the right response, jumped, but Baffin Thingy still had the anti-air, which is just beautiful on Baffin Thingy's part to have both of that in there. What the raw flash chop? Definitely an execution error. Come and throw, standing heavy kick. No, he walks up. No, you got a quick rise against, uh, you got a quick rise against that. You have to quick rise against the power bomb. You cannot give Alex the pressure to be able to walk up and do a meaty lariat. If you get power bombed, the mix-up does not exist of you not doing a quick rise. Quick rise. 
Get the hell out of there. <laughs> get the hell out of there. Oh, there we go. Big combo. No meat. Oh, actually, he did have the meter for the EX. The stomp. Oh, that the, the lariat. That meaty lariat is so scary. Ah, oh, the crush. The crush into the critical. Not going to kill, but it's going to come so close. Baffin thingy on the verge of taking the show. You can scrimmage number three. Can Renever get the comeback? There is sweep. Watch out for the, oh no, the panic throw. Baffin thingy takes it and becomes, you're sure you can scrimmage number three champion. Congratulations to Baffin thingy being down 0-2 and making it all the way back to take it 3-0. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Anyways. <laughs> Thanks guys for watching the show you can scrimmage. Hope you guys enjoy this and hope you guys uh, had a good time with this. Hope this is uh, valuable information for you guys and uh, hope you guys do um, uh, enjoy this and had a good time and, I, I, and, and, and find this valuable. And I hope that this is one of those things that you know you, and like I said, I'll have to start raising it up to um, uh, maybe a 64 man cap or something. It'll make the tournament run a little bit longer, but as long as the loser's bracket all runs within itself, it's usually not too bad. So, uh, but otherwise, super fun times. Good stuff, good stuff. And thanks everybody for participating in it. Hope everybody finds it helpful. Hope it does feel like you're learning a lot. And uh, next week, it's all about Baffin Thingy trying to get revenge and try to play me again and blow me up this time because I, God, freaking Alex. Anyways, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Have a good night. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Oh, I also forgot to say at the very end, what do you get when you combine a DP motion plus thumbs up? Sure you can.